Tonight, top internet companies take a stand on net neutrality. 3D printers go on sale at Home Depot, and a long-rumored Apple iPhone might be delayed. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 128, from Monday, July 14th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by NatureBox. Order great-tasting, healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like coconut date energy bites. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. I'm Mike Elgin. Let's get right to our top story. Major tech companies finally weighed in on the FCC's proposal for net neutrality. They did it in the form of a letter from the Internet Association, which speaks for Google, Facebook, Twitter, AOL, eBay, Amazon, Netflix, Yahoo, and many others. Here to shed light on this news is Harry McCracken, a longtime technology editor and columnist, the founder of the Technologizer blog, recently the editor-at-large of Time, and soon-to-be technology editor at Fast Company. Welcome, Harry McCracken. Hey, Mike. It's great to be with you. Thank you for being here. Harry, this is about as close as we're going to get to a consensus from the tech industry. What was their basic position? Well, they are, uh, they did not take a really hardcore stance opposed to how things have been going, but they did push back on the recent developments, which included a court saying that the old approach to net neutrality was a no-go and uh, the notion that you could have net neutrality but also have a fast lane for the Internet uh, this group, uh, which consists of most of the big Silicon Valley service providers, said that if you're giving one company a fast lane and charging for it, pretty much by definition, that means you're slowing down other services. Uh, they also talked about the idea that that wired services such as cable, wireless services such as LTE, should be subject to the same rules, which has not been true for the last few years. The rules have been tighter for wired internet and for wireless. Now, was that uh, that desire to, to have wired and wireless rules be the same, something that was considered radical by the FCC? I mean, why weren't they equal before? There's some logic to them being treated differently, especially a few years ago, and they went on two different paths. Um, clearly, uh, wired internet bandwidth is not as much of an issue historically. Uh, wireless internet, it has been. And so wireless companies like Verizon have had more leeway to uh, treat different types of data differently as long as they didn't punish companies who competed with their own services. And these, these internet companies and the Internet Association are saying, moving forward, it shouldn't be that way. We should have one set of rules for both. And it, it kind of makes sense because clearly wireless is the next battleground and all of the debate we've been having over wired internet and net neutrality is going to apply equally and maybe even more so to wireless internet. The existing proposal allows for paid prioritization when it's, quote, commercially reasonable. The Internet Association found that bit problematic. What was their problem with it? Well, it's, there's not, it's not very clear what commercially reasonable is uh, and how you can say that you're going to treat all services with neutrality while at the same time charging some companies to get a faster uh, pipeline. And basically, the Internet Association is saying you, you can't do that. By definition, if you're asking some companies to pay more for faster Internet, that means that the folks who don't pay are getting slower Internet. Do you think this letter will be influential? Or are they going to have an impact? I hope so. I mean, it's been hard to project in the past, but uh, at least this is almost everybody in the Valley uh, taking one stance. And we'll have to see how hard they push it. In, in the past, you've, you've seen companies like Google sometimes say, they're going to fight aggressively for net neutrality and then backing down a little bit or doing deals with companies like Verizon. So um, this is not the end of the battle. This is just sort of the next chapter. And, of course, Google's big contribution there is YouTube, which uh, other than, I think, Netflix is the biggest uh, pusher of traffic on the Internet. Now, uh, Harry, on a separate issue, you posted a piece this morning that restored my faith in humanity. Your post is about a trend in clickbait journalism where the article promises to restore the reader's lost faith in humanity for one reason or another. Why does this cliche work online? Well, the amazing thing about the web today is that a huge percentage of the traffic, the content sites get, they get from real people who have shared stuff on Facebook and Twitter. And it's 
no longer just enough to have an interesting story, an interesting headline. A lot of sites are trying to make explicit promises uh, to you of what you'll get in return for clicking on their headlines. And uh, there's almost nothing you could offer somebody that's more impressive sounding than saying that you will restore their faith in humanity. And that, that promise also kind of makes you feel good about the content. There are all these stories about Kardashians and cats that we all know are empty calories. And the sort of stories which supposedly restore your lost faith in humanity tend to be things about people being nice to each other. And in theory, at least, you can feel good about clicking on them. Isn't it mostly clickbait journalism that destroyed our faith in humanity in the first place? Absolutely. I, I think the web is actually is making us kind of cynical these days because it is so obvious that so many headlines are promising things they can't deliver. And uh, even the most inspiring stories on the web are not going to, like, with a click, turn you from being a cynic about the world into, into loving your fellow man. Harry McCracken, I want to thank you for coming on Tech News today, tonight, excuse me, Tech News tonight. Uh, where can people find your work these days? You can find me at technologizer.com and at Harry McCracken on Twitter. And starting next week, you can also find me on fastcompany.com. And congratulations for that uh, for that job. I'm sure you do a fantastic job, and I'm looking forward to uh, having you on our news shows uh, as a Fast Company uh, technology, technology editor. Sounds great, Mike. All right, take care. Well, coming up, I'll tell you why the World Cup soccer tournament was the biggest sports event in the history of the Internet. But first, I want to tell you about our sponsor today. I'm going to say something that's going to surprise you. You should be snacking more. Why? NatureBox, that's why. NatureBox snacks have zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, and nothing artificial. NatureBox sends great tasting snacks right to your door with free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Here's how it works. Just click on the continue button to choose between three subscription options. Then place your order. Once you're a member, you can select which snacks you'd like in your monthly box. You can select by dietary needs like vegan, soy free, gluten conscious, lactose free, nut free, and non-GMO. You can also select by taste savory, sweet, or spicy. The next time you get cranky and hungry and are ready to eat anything, remember Nature Box. Snack guilt-free with coconut date energy bites, Santa Fe corn sticks, pear praline crunch, and over 100 more healthy choices. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full, stay strong, go to naturebox.com slash twit. And we thank Nature Box for their support of Tech News Tonight. And now for the tech feed. The former head of Google Glass is leaving Google to join Amazon. Babak Parviz announced his career change on Google+. Parviz has been working on various ways to bring contextual information and sensors to glasses and contact lenses for many years. One pet project was Google contact lenses, which are able to monitor the wearer's glucose levels. It's not clear what Parviz will do, work on at Amazon, but his hire may signal a new emphasis on research at that company. How mainstream is 3D printing becoming? Well, pretty mainstream. Uh, some Home Depot stores will soon sell MakerBox, MakerBot replicator 3D printers as part of a pilot program. Home Depot has been selling the printers online for months, but now they'll go on sale at about 12 locations in California, Illinois, and New York. In addition to the replicator, the stores will also carry the MakerBot's replicator mini 3D printer and MakerBot's digitizer 3D scanner. Home Depot also plans to add kiosks to demonstrate 3D printers to shoppers and explain how they work. Apple is expected to announce both a 4.7-inch iPhone and, for the first time ever, a larger one expected to come in at about 5.5 inches when the screen is measured diagonally. But now, KGI Securities analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, who is often right about such predictions, says the larger iPhone may be delayed past October or even until next year because of supply constraints associated with its first-ever Sapphire screen. And the rumored iWatch may be delayed as well, according to Quo. Growing evidence suggests that the nickel used in many consumer electronics products may be causing allergic skin irritation. The most recent report comes from an article to be published in the August 2nd issue of the medical journal Pediatrics, which traced an 11-year-old boy's rashes to possible exposure to an iPad. After reducing nickel in the boy's diet and covering the iPad with the case, the boy's rashes improved. Apple said in a statement that the company uses the highest quality materials in its products and that Apple meets the same standards set for jewelry. We reported on this show in the past on the recall of a Fitbit fitness tracking bracelet because of reports that some users were forming blisters, which the company said were probably caused by an allergic reaction to nickel. Pediatricians are reporting a rise in nickel allergies among children, and doctors are being advised to check for exposure to consumer electronics as a source 
of the problem. Well, the World Cup soccer tournament ended yesterday with Germany, Germany triumphant over Argentina to win the cup. A huge win for Germany, but it was also a big event for the Internet. In fact, the biggest of Internet event ever. Engadget reported today that Brazil's disastrous defeat by Germany was the most tweeted sports event in history, triggering 32 million tweets. Facebook also reported that the World Cup overall was the biggest traffic-generating sports event ever for the social network, with comments, likes, and posts totaling more than 280 million interactions. Meanwhile, the Spanish-language network Univision, which live-streamed World Cup games online, reported 456,000 unique viewers. Well, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Mike Elgin. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.